Whiskey friends, far and wide, we are live. What is up? How's everybody doing? There goes Winston the Whiskey Cat. I'm American Humble Mom User. Been a minute. Hopping on live tonight. Opening a Tam Do 25 independent bottled single cask, which should be a lot of fun. Beaming this signal from my home base, Chicago, Illinois, USA. What is happening, everybody? Hopefully, we'll get to see some folks tonight. It's, I know it has been a a while since we've done a whiskey live. I do see uh, we got some folks in the chat already, which is great. Um, so just to kick this off, I'm going to show you this bottle quick. I'm going to open this and let this rest in the glass a little bit before we uh, get into this uncorking tasting. But here it is. 25-year-old Tamdu. Uh, Gordon McPhail bottle. I'll tell you all about it in about, oh, we'll give this 20 minutes. What would Ralphie say? Minute in the glass for every year in the cast, 20, 25 minutes. In the meantime, let me know what you guys are drinking tonight. Or if you had anything good this weekend yet, drop it in the chat, chat. All right, there we go. So we'll let that sit for a little bit. Get some oxygen, open up, treat this 25-year-old like it wants to be treated. We'll see if it actually pays off in terms of this whiskey actually opening up a little bit from that neck pour. But in the meantime, I am sipping on a uh, Woodenville single cask or single barrel, I should say. It's bourbon. This is a bourbon beer out of Washington. This is a really good one. Uh, it's a yeah single barrel. This was a select by a place called Blackwell's. Uh, Sixty point three two on the ABV. Good damn. Uh, no age statement. It's straight, so at least two. But it's really good. Uh, they're probably a little bit on the pricey side these days now, but I think these. I mean, they were even pricey. I think when I got this a while ago, which was like sixty. Anyways, let's say hi to the folks in the chat. First in the door, hey, it's our friend down there in Florida, Jupiter, Florida, to be exact. Mr. G, what's up? Yeah, live malt. <laughs> Good to see you, man. There's Duluth, Minnesota in the house. Greetings from Duluth. Spring arrived in Chicago yet? Um, Yes and no, you know. It's that time of year here where it's nice, and then it's not, and then it's nice, and then it's not. It goes back and forth. So, I mean, we're not in the full clear yet, but you know how it goes in the Midwest. D Pass, what's up with our boy out in Cali? How are you doing, Mr. Don or Pass Whiskey? Eric and everyone at work. I'll we'll watch it tonight at 2 a.m. when I get off. Finally seeing the light at the end of the tunnel for no snow for weeks and days off. Central California, getting yourself more and more snow, huh? We had like no snow in Chicago this winter. I don't think we had a foot total the entire uh, winter. It's crazy. What's up, New York? How you doing, Jack? Man, nice to see you. Thanks for popping in. Good to see Jack the Pickled Hound in the house. Hey, there's Brad out in Detroit. Missed y'all. Good to see you, man. Hope everyone's having a nice night. Sipping some Ben Roman Cast Strength 2012. Number three. A little sulfury, unfortunately. 2012. Is that the one from, uh, you know, one of those got a lot of hype, as far as I remember. Um, how long you had that thing open? It might tame down a little bit. I don't know if I've had a Ben Romick cast ring. At least not one of those vintages. They had this one, which they discontinued, called the Ben Romick 10 Imperial Proof, which was like British Imperial scale but it was still like 50 something which was pretty close I, that whiskey was awesome i'm it's unfortunate that they don't make that one anymore ah my playstation buddy what's up man somewhere on the east texas western louisiana borderlands holding down the whiskey throne the man with the wrench it's daniel h <laughs> wide world of sports and disease what's going on man 
Corsair Hydra. Man, I have never had a Corsair, but they look like they do a lot of really fun stuff. Wow, what's up with the Hydra? I don't know if I've even heard of that one. Corsair, they're the ones with the um, labels that basically look like a, what was that movie? The Tarantino one, Reservoir Dogs. Hydra, Corsair Hydra. Hydro, Hydro, Hydro. Ah, oh, that's weird. It's actually not. It's like giving me uh, cooling unit information. <laughs> Here it is. Interesting. All right. Yeah, I've never tried any of their stuff, but man, I do. I do dig their uh, their style because they. I mean, they have a lot of different interesting stuff. Batch one got the hype. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they used to do those. I mean, there was like, there were a lot of like 2006, 2007 vintages, and then maybe some 2007. I don't know if they did it every year, but then, yeah, I, I saw there was like this rebirth and all of a sudden a bunch of interest in Ben Romick around that 2012. I never had it. I've actually not had, uh, got a Ben Romick. Is it all, is it just all first fill sherry? I haven't got a Ben Romick in a minute. I don't remember if those are. I mean, I, all, most of their stuff's all sherry, but I don't know if that one is. Well, no, it's not all sherry. I shouldn't say it. Shreveport waiting for a meat order. I'm not going to ask any more questions on that. <laughs> no, I know you're working, man. Good stuff. Anyways, yeah. So we're gonna. I got this this Tamdu uncorked and poured, as you saw in the beginning of the video. We're gonna let this thing sit for like another ten or so, fifteen minutes. I just want to give this its day in court, and then I'll uh, I'll dive in. But what's been good, man? Who's been getting anything interesting of late? I think the last hmm. I think the last bottle that I got that was really pretty impressive is that Octomore thirteen point two. It's full Oloroso cask. That one was really tasty. And it's of course getting better as it um, as it oxidizes, as a lot of whiskey does. Daniel H says, "I did get something interesting through Zach today. Ardmore single cast twelve, finished in Isla whiskey cask. Okay, Ardmore isn't all Ardmore peated. That's interesting that they chose an Isla cask. Ardmore's from." You know, this is one of those distilleries that I, 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 it's like you see them all the time. I don't know if I've ever really had an Ardmore. Is all of their stuff peated? I felt like it was. And I think they're like, a, what are they, like a Highland distillery or something? Highland, Bayside, I don't know. Probably a Highland, I'm going to guess. Are they peated like, this one he says it. This is unpeated. Some are peated, some are. Okay, so I, I was wondering if they're kind of like open. You know, open's like lightly peated or whatever. They try to distinguish themselves with that Western Highland moniker or label, title, whatever you want to call it, which I never, I don't know. Open was one of those distilleries that was really um, instrumental in kind of getting me into scotch, but I've just not had an open that I thought was impressive ever since I got over thinking that the, uh, thinking that the uh, 2000 or that the, uh, the, the 14 year old Oban was like my intro to scotch. I don't know if I've had an Oban since then that I actually thought was, was worth, worth it, especially because the prices of them have gotten crazy. I have never had their distillers edition, but I did have their 18, which I am not worth it to me. Um, the Little Bay was intriguing, it's just not something I feel like I'm going to go buy again, but it was interesting. It was an NAS. It had like quarter casks in it, I think. Not sure. New World Forever. Do you like the 2022 Bunas? Yes, I do. It was a step ahead or a step up from the, uh, 2021. I think I'd buy it with confidence. If you like Bunahaven. I think this is the one that uh, the first one I, I didn't feel like was a full, like impressive uh, step forward 
from the regular 12, I think this one goes further. Um, now, I don't know what the price is or how available they are right now, but I, I would buy that one with confidence. I wish I actually would have got two. It's really good. It just, it's, the finish is longer. The sherry is is a little bit richer. There's more depth to it. It, it I, I feel like it just doesn't taste maybe as rushed as that first one did. I just, I wanted the first one to be better than it was. And, and I think if we're being real, I did do a video comparing the two. Um, probably not dropped it not too long ago. If you want to look back uh, on the channel and you can hear my full notes on that. But yeah, but top line is, yeah, I, I was, I was impressed with it. I thought it was really good. <laughs> there you go, man. Somebody's going to be doing some barbecuing. All right. Man, this Woodenville, I tell you, this is really good. I think I opened this on a live once, and I never, I don't think I ever did a full review, but I mean, this is a store pick, so whatever, but the this is, yeah, this is their single barrel bourbon. It's good. I'm sure they've been since, and again, this was, I don't remember when this one came out, maybe like two, a year and a half ago. I'm sure they've been since bought out by some big conglomerate. I don't know if it's changed their whiskey or not, but their bourbon's good. It's got a almost a little bit of a like a yeasty mash to it. They do do something rather unique with their bourbon, and I think I opened this on a live and talked about it. I just can't remember what it is. Um, they do something that gives this a little bit of a unique flavor, but I wouldn't be surprised if it has something to do with with like bottom fermenting yeast or something like that, or bottom fermented barley, you know, whatever. Like they did it in beer barrels or something. I, I don't know. It does. It's not like explicitly saying it's beer barrels, um, but it has a bit of that kind of beer yeast taste to it. A bit sweet. It's a bit bready, and it, it only shows up subtly at the end. Otherwise, it's like a nice, rich toffee punchy bourbon. It's got some spice. Dig it. Uh, store picks of cast strength are fantastic. All right. Well, I'm about to drive home, so I'll just be listening. All right. Cool, man. All right. So we've had this uh, Tambu sitting here for about 12 minutes. I'm going to wait a couple more minutes. We'll see if we get another focus on. We've got seven in now. What is up, y'all? If you haven't yet, say hi in the chat. Love to connect. Ooh, make that eight people. Um, in about five minutes, I'll start talking about this tamdu and 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 then we're going to get into the uh to the tasting on this and i can tell you a little bit about my experience with tamdu kind of what i've thought about them and would love to hear what you guys have thought about it i know tamdu is not necessarily a distillery that you can find you know really easily or at least find multiple versions or expressions from that you can taste and try uh, all that easily here in the U.S. That said, um, I'm sure some of you have had a couple. I'd love to hear what you guys think. I have uh, been pretty impressed with them. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. In the meantime, um, I'm really also really impressed with this one, Bill Bourbon, if I didn't tell you. Um, this is this is surprising. I, I honestly I don't buy very much bourbon, and I, I don't know the last bourbon I even bought. Um, it might have been a Four Roses Barrel Proof pick, and I feel like this must have been at least four or five months ago. So I'm pretty out of the loop about bourbon. Um, and I see the bourbon hype, the bourbon bubble, the bourbon great you know the love of bourbon is still really big so good good for bourbon drinkers i guess well not depending on how you look at it but i've really been kind of just drinking down my stash i mean i maybe have 30 bourbons 35 and at least probably 10 of those are elijah craig barrel proofs or four roses uh barrel proofs i got a couple larcenies back there of the uh, Barrel Proof C922, which was really good. Yeah, I, I just don't have a lot. Um, actually, I think the last thing I bought was that Angel's Envy store pick, which 
is good, but I don't know if it's a hundred dollars good. <coughs> All right, what's up, Detroit? Brad Porter. I've never had a Tamdu. Heard good things. Sure, so it's got yeah. Um, Tamdu, as far as I understand, I've never seen one other than a special release that they did that was not all sherry. I think they are a full sherry shop there. They have a 10, a 12, a 15. All of those you can sometimes find around the US. If you find any, those are usually the ones you're going to see. Um, they're a bit on the pricier side. Uh, they have an 18 now, which I've not had. And then they do the barrel proofs, which they do in batches, NAS. Those you can sometimes stumble around too. Batch six, which I was my whiskey of the year, not last year, two years ago, um, was simply awesome. I was blown away by that. And, you know, segueing right into Tamdu, I think the thing about Tamdu that I've really appreciated is, you know, they it has a depth and it has character. It's got a little foostiness. It's got a little earthiness. It's got... It just felt like it's always the ones I've had have had a bit more to offer in terms of like flavor profile complexity and just enjoyment than, you know, other, I'm thinking of other cast strength sherry whiskeys in particular, Aberlour, Glen Farkless, um, you know, I, I don't want to go too far with it, but like, yeah, I, I, I think a lot of like, you know, Glen Goyne's cast strength to some degree, although I'm a big fan of Glen Goyne. I, I just think Tamdu has, it's a bit of a whiskey that I think is made for or marketed more towards uh, folks who've been in their Scotch journey for a while and are looking for something a little bit unique. And they have, uh, I think, largely succeeded in that. You will pay for it, though. I mean, their 15 is like a well over $100 as far as I know. And, you know, honestly, that's that can be pretty prohibitive for if, if you, you know, 15 year old whiskey. Um, but with the way things are going today in the whiskey, uh, in the whiskey world, it's not, I guess, super surprising anymore. But they have been on the pricier side compared to others in their price range. So <clears throat> let's talk full on pricey. Um, this, oh, what did Brad say? Yeah. Yeah, Oloroso is usually, I think, the way they roll. Um, I don't know if I've ever had anything that's not been an Oloroso cask. So let's start talking about it. So here's what we're looking at. This is a 25-year-old uh, Tamdu. Um, this is uh, bottled in 1996. Uh, I'm sorry. This was distilled in 1996 and bottled in 2021. Um, it is refill sherry hogsheads. It's a pretty, you know, the hogsheads are kind of on the larger side of the barrels. Am I right? Yeah. Um, and it had, you know, this is a refill barrel. Uh, this one is bottled at 53.7%. That is promising. Um, this is also, I should mention, a hand-selected barrel from Benny's Beverage Depot. Benny's a liquor store um with multiple locations in chicago land um 206 bottles total they are a space cider price on this was oh not this is non-show filtered natural color so, so right here and price on this was about 300 dollars. so not cheap <laughs> um but that abv the presentation the single cast nature which is always a little bit of a gamble sometimes uh, definitely, I and, and my previous experience with Tamdu and and uh, not uh, the aforementioned uh, whiskey of the year that I had from them. Um, in addition to just everything I said about kind of why I respect their profile from what I've had, seem to make this a whiskey worth buying. So. We're gonna dive into it in a second, but first I gotta say, hey, to Sacha, what's up? How you doing? I never catch a live by coincidence. I'm headed to a Glengoyne Tamdu tasting in a few minutes. Oh, that is awesome, man! I love Glengoyne. I uh, love Tamdu. 
So hopefully you'll get to taste some really nice ones. If I'm still live when you get done, or if you're jumping on your phone in real time, tell us tell us what they've they've uh, put out for you to taste. I'd be really curious to hear. That's awesome. Okay. So again, tail of the tape here. Independent bottling, single cask, 53.7%, non-show filter, natural color, 25 years old. That's what you're looking at here. And this is the color. That is a 25-year-old Tamdu, and it is freaking lovely. Can't complain about this, right? All right. Let me just clean the palette here a little bit. We've had this sitting here for 20, 21 minutes. It's enough, in my opinion. Whatever. Let's check it out. Um, again, 300 bucks. So <laughs> this, this, I, I hope this delivers. Well, I've got something on the glass here. All right. Here we go. 25-year-old Tam Du Gordon McPhail on the nose. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. So again, what you would probably expect, 25 years of sherry cast maturation is, is obviously a full-on sherry bomb. And you are getting a lot of sherry here, but again, you're getting some of this kind of nuance. Um, not as much that I usually pick up from Tamdu, but there's certainly a little bit going on here. Let me tell you about the notes I'm getting. So first of all, I'd characterize this as a oaky, spicy whiskey. Um, berries, dark chocolate, almost um, a bit of charred oak, and and strangely, a little bit of like a... What is this? It's, it's almost a little bit of a buttery creme brulee slash... Um, There's some citrus. It's almost like lemon peel. And honestly, it, it's it's a bit aggressive. I guess that's not fully surprising at 53 some percent. I mean, the legs on this are really nice. It's it seems pretty oily. So the nose is not um well, okay, here we go. I was about to say the nose is not popping to me fully, but it, it's starting to more and more the more I go in. The, the citrus lemon lime thing is going now. It's like confectionery vanilla, confectionery sugar. But yeah, you're getting okay. Yeah. Fruit cake. A little bit of graham, like graham cracker, marshmallow even. There's a lot going on here. So the nose on this definitely has opening up even in real time. But again, I, I, as I said, it was oaky and spicy with a side of sweet. Let's check it out. Okay, here we go. Tamdu, 25 years old. Salons, y'all. Happy Saturday. Good to see everybody. And happy April. Wow. Hmm. This is gonna this is gonna this is gonna need water. You ever have one of these these whiskeys where like even on the nose you can tell like oh yeah, a couple drops of water is gonna open this up. And the palate just confirms it. That's exactly what's going on here. Hmm. Let's do one more neat, and then I'll tell you kind of what I'm thinking here. Okay. Not overly impressed. First thing, as far as the palate is concerned, berries. 
it's a dry palette. It's a drier palette than I even maybe expected this would be. I mean, you get that sometimes with Oloroso in particular, but definitely here, Christmas spices, butterscotch, vanilla, dried berries, dried berries. This is not a juicy whiskey. It is a much more drier and subtle whiskey. The sweetness, it seems to be coming in, it's like a little bit of like a strawberry type thing, but for the most part, dry berries. As it, as it keeps going, the spice comes in more. You're getting little hints of anise. You're getting cinnamon. I don't know what else we got going here. Oak. Medium finish. Um, a little sour, a little tart, a little sweet. So almost a sweet sour thing. A little bit of that like lemon pinch to it. Eh. What I'm not noticing here is a lot of the malt characteristic, which I guess in some sense you wouldn't fully expect from a 25 year old. I mean, you're maybe not getting it as much, right? Obviously using the refill cast instead of first fill is making some space for the malt to shine here. Uh, I'm just not getting a lot of it. There's a lingering kind of confectionery sweetness. The palate's more medium long. Okay, one more neat sifter. Yeah, all in all, I mean, I think the last live we did where we do where we opened the Highland Park 25, I think I was much more impressed with that. Mm -hmm. This is a challenging whiskey. It's just a little bit more aggressive and edgy than I expected. Let's see what water does. As it's as I'm I'm kind of sipping through this though, like like really with older whiskeys, I can't say enough about taking your time in being very like like really exploring the palate with each sip. Because it, these things, if you drink them too fast, the subtleties and the complexities and the really interesting notes in this can pass you by. And, and I and I can say right now with this third sip, I'm getting just a huge wave of dark chocolate. And it's it's almost taming down a bit of the dryness I had in the first two sips. It is it's it's like a raspberry jam thing going on. Um, this is still leaning on the drier side and a little bit on the oakier side. Um, but I didn't even pick that up the first couple sips I had. And so, again, it's just a testament to, like, treating a 25-year-old whiskey, even, like, 18-year-olds, really any whiskey, but you're just going to find more subtleties in the slow, small sips that you get of this and making sure you leave it on your palate, which is what I'm attempting to do with this one. Okay. I'm going to do one more neat sip because this last one was so damn good, and then we'll do water. Let me know in the chat, too. Oh, this nose has totally changed um, almonds, uh, like almond kind of doughy Christmas cookies. Let me know in the chat if, uh, if and what Tamdus you've had and or which ones you maybe see around your neck of the woods. Have you ever been curious about them? Look here. I'm liking this more. Hmm. All right. Let's do some water. So I was telling you it's 53%. 53.7 to be exact. I'm going to put like three drops on it first. I don't want to put too much. Older whiskeys tend to be more delicate. And I think you can drown them on easier, even if their ABV is a little bit. So we're going to try the small amount here. The thing that I think I'm missing from this that I get off of the batch proof um, versions that they release annually is just the richness, the like the jammy richness. This one is a more sophisticated, obviously has more range of flavor, but I was hoping it would still kind of be able to somehow maintain that kind of, Thick viscosity and 
it's not quite. It's more of a medium viscosity. So the nose isn't changing too much with water. Again, a bit of the oak, a little still bit of sharpness. That almondy note has gotten stronger. Vanilla, caramel. Yeah, maybe not caramel. I take that back. It's more toffee. The dried berries. The strawberry note is almost all gone. It's a nice nose. All right, here we go. There it is. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. There's that richness that I was hoping for. The water's bringing it out. What it's also bringing out is a bit more spice. Hot, red hot cinnamon, clove, tobacco. Still a little bit dry on the finish. Not as oaky, but still dry, like red wine dry. Okay. Water has made this better, for sure, on the on the palate. I feel like it has brought out more of that richness. It's still, though, it's a it's a little disjointed. It's a little it's a little off the mark. I'm actually a bit surprised. So Binny's is is pretty good about uh, doing their own uh, hand selecting barrel picks. So you may notice sometimes you go to a place like Total Wine, it'll say like selected for Total Wine if it's a pick. And sometimes it says selected by Total Wine or selected by whomever. I don't know if it's a legal thing or not, but from what I understand, I mean, that's the huge difference, right? If it's selected for, it's basically the distiller or the distributors choosing uh, some barrels and just sending it to you so you can uh, put your name on it as a hand or as a barrel pick. If it's selected by, I mean, it really means that like they're sending somebody, somebody to taste it or they are given a bunch of samples of different barrels and they're selecting it. So this one is selected, you know, as, as I've heard from good uh, information of people at Vinny's, that's what they do almost universally is they're the ones tasting the barrels. This one is, uh, it's a curious pick. I wonder who picked this. Um, it, it just doesn't quite, it doesn't quite bring what I was hoping. It is not bad. I don't know that I would spend $300 on it again had I tasted it how it goes sometimes but this is going to be another one of these whiskeys that like letting it open up over time will be interesting i would say right now i wouldn't buy this over the um the batch proof uh number six which i've had and i wouldn't buy this over the five even but you know we'll do a full review of this eventually and uh, uh get into it a bit more But, you know, I'm wanting a little bit more consistency with this. It's still just a bit dry, too dry, and there's this sharp edge to it. I'm hoping the sharp edge rounds off and, and starts revealing more of the flavor in it. But right now, it's just a bit of, it's a bit too abrasive. Hmm. Well, there you go. Um... We got some folks in the chat. What's up? There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, with water, I'd say it is. It's not quite what I was hoping it was going to be yet. But um, I mean, certainly not a bad whiskey. I don't. It's not something I would want to spend the money on again. It's just a little bit too edgy it's a little bit too sharp it's a little too sour for my taste i don't i don't I, i'm just not exactly curious and this is something you run into if you're going to roll the dice with uh independent bottlings particularly barrel picks uh, you're putting somebody you know obviously all of this is created by somebody else's taste but uh you know 
with with barrel picks it's it's one person from a shop and then and they're kind of going based on their taste and I, i'm not sure the good folks at Vinny's hit the mark on this one it's a little interesting If I was going to throw a score on it, I mean, I think it's above average. I, I, I don't think it's, I think this is like a three, five, three, two, five is kind of where it's falling on my scale. It's, I can think of a lot of other whiskeys that I would probably rather pay the price for. But we're going to have a second dram with it. Keep going. Hang out. Where did you get it from? Says Daniel H. Online. Nope, it's local. Uh, I purchased this at uh, Benny's Beverage Depot in Chicago. And I have uh, no shortage of Benny's picks. And normally I find them quite good. This one's, again, not bad. It's just not a winner. It's not, it's not uh, hitting all the marks that I would want for a 25-year-old. Sometimes you have to like navigate your personal flavor preference versus like the objective quality of something. There's a lot of whiskeys that I think are, are quality that I don't necessarily um, like. And you can tell the difference the more you taste whiskey. I mean, you can tell if it's a well-made whiskey, even if it's not your cup of tea. Like this is kind of falling in that ballpark. It's not necessarily my cup of tea. It's a little bit too sour, a little bit too tart. Um, a little bit too foosty and edgy, even with the 21 so minutes in the glass. Um, and not in a way that I think is like the type of uh, complexity that would intrigue, you know, like the type of, yeah, not the type of complexity that I think would intrigue people who are, you know, have been sipping scotch for a while. I, I think this is one that you would probably taste if you've been drinking this for a while and be like, mm, this is not really that amazing. <laughs> and, and then when you consider the price, I, I, I think no. So I'm actually going to do a quick comparison, okay, with another sherry uh, single cask pick from another dis uh, liquor store here in Chicago. <laughs> And we're going to talk a little bit about the differences that I may notice. So this one is a signatory vintage uh, Glenlivet 1995. This was selected, hand-selected too. So this one also says hand-selected by uh, Warehouse Liquors in Chicago, which I would, uh, wouldn't would feel uh, wrong in saying it's probably one of the best liquor stores in the entire Chicagoland area. Um, this is a 20-year-old. This was, again, handpicked by them, 264 uh, barrels, or bottles, rather. 57.4 um, natural color, cast strength, all that good stuff. I'm going to put this in a glass. And, again, so this is 20 years old. It's a little, obviously, younger, but still up there. This one was $200, okay? Um, the if this is first fill sherry, so you know maybe we're gonna just get a lesson in what I prefer here. But I'm gonna do a little comparison between this and the Tamdu. Obviously not apples to apples, but you know again, I, I, it's it's something you can do sometimes to kind of get interest in the different picks that people do and you know the places that you buy from. So this is the refill hog sherry hogshead 25 Tamdu, and this is the 20 year old first fill uh, Oloroso Sherry Glenlivet. So, the Glenlivet immediately is much more fruity, fruit forward, not a surprise, first fill Sherry. I mean, <laughs> the nose on this is just awesome. You still get a little bit of a barley kind of grassy note in it, which I like. And again, back to the Tamdu. Again, more toffee, vanilla, butterscotch uh, sharpness.
Okay. I'm going to do a taste first of the um, the first Philolorosa Glenlivet. See that? <laughs> the good folks at Warehouse Liquors know what they're doing. That's just awesome. It still has a bit of dryness, but what you're getting here is a much richer whiskey. Again, not not to be surprised with the first full casks or first full cask, but um, it still has a lot of complexity. A lot of the notes that were very forward on the Tamdu were more subtle here. So I'm getting like little hints of toffee, little hints of butterscotch. But it's a little bit more, it's it's more integrated. Wow. Back to our uh, Tamdu. And again, that nose is just so almondy, confectionery. There's the little bit of that, again, the sharpness, which I, th I find comes more on the palate. All right, let's go. You know, I, uh, this is a whiskey. Yeah, see, it's, it's refill sherry. Yeah, it, it's just a little bit too much. A little bit too much of the the tannic, the dry, and the that that sour tart tart sour note that is just not quite registering with me the way I was hoping it would. I do not pick this up on the uh, the regular cast drink whiskeys. Um. So. I'm, here's what I'm trying to figure out is like, is this a whiskey that for 300? So again, just to be comparison, I like the Glenlivet more. This is a 20 year old pick from Warehouse Liquors, uh, two hundred dollars. The 25 year old Tamdu Biddy's pick, three hundred dollars. I would go the Glenlivet all day. Um, yes, it is a little bit different because it's first fill. Uh, I clearly am more partial to that, but I also just find the, the drinking experience a bit more memorable. Now. Last live I did, I did a 25-year-old Highland Park at 46%. I would also put that over this team. And that's a distillery bottle. The tropical fruit stuff that showed up on that was was really, really delicious. Uh, so, you know, I, all in all, I'm a little bummed. I was hoping for a bit more of a euphoric experience. Now, Tamdu, again, as we were talking about in the beginning of the, of the stream, look, Tamdu is a distillery that's got a bit of character, it's not for everybody. I have enjoyed pretty much every Tamdu I've had. I will enjoy this. I am just not as impressed with it given the price. I thought this was going to be a slam dunk whiskey for me. It's not quite a slam dunk whiskey for me. Um, I'll do a full review of this eventually. And, you know, because I do think that it's a distillery that has had a good track record with me. And, and of course, I want to make sure I give it enough time to... to fully express itself, which is always a thing you should consider, uh, specifically with older whiskeys, making sure they have time in the bottle. But generally speaking, um, it's it's not a wow. It's not a bottle of wow. It's not <laughs> it's not one of these that I'm going to uh, rush out and want to buy another one of. And for $300, I can think of a, a couple of their whiskeys that I'd probably rather spend the money on. But that's how it goes. If you're going to roll the dice on whiskeys like this, uh, they're not all going to be everything you completely want, and that seems to be the case here. Contrary opinion <laughs> is this Glen Limit, which, uh, given the opportunity, just look at this. This is the best Glen Limit I've ever had. Um, and the fact that this is only $200, if you live anywhere in Chicago, in the metro, uh, get yourself down to Warehouse Liquors downtown and get a bottle of this, because this is killer especially at 200 bucks killer um so you know that's how it goes uh yeah so you know we'll sip a little bit more of this tam dude and you know what else i'm gonna do i'm gonna leave the cork off this for a while probably an hour or two and just let this thing aerate a bit it, it's just a little tight in the meantime 
We got 12 folks in, which is awesome. What's going on? Let me catch up on the chat. Hey, Mr. White. How you doing, man? Great to see you. What's good in Ontario, man? Mike B. Out there in Maryland. How you doing, buddy? Nice to see you, sir. Great to see you, man. It has been a minute, right? I don't remember the last live stream I did. I mean, I think it was probably a little bit over a month ago, to be honest. Sorry, y'all. But kind of how it is these days, the new norm. Gary's here. San Francisco. It's great to see you, Gary. Hope you've been well, man. Planning a trip to Campbelltown Island. Dude, I'm starting to dabble in that thought, too, this time next year. Uh, I don't know about Campbelltown. I look almost certainly, but I am considering a... Uh, I'm starting to preliminarily... Preliminarily? Starting preliminary planning of a... Uh, finally doing the Scotland trip. I've been to the UK multiple times and I've been everywhere over there but Scotland, which makes zero sense uh, <laughs> when you think about it. So I'm, I'm definitely looking to get, uh, get over there. And I think um, I'm going to have an opportunity right around this time in 2024. So uh, if you end up planning anything and have some good experiences or not or anything to share about how it goes for you if you're going before I might go. Uh, do let me know. Hit me at Multimuser. I would love to hear some, uh, you know, thoughts on on uh, the best way to plan this. I know you want to get there before the midgies right? start hatching. It's so no summer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm looking at maybe April, May next year. And yes, uh, if the next thought you had was, will I do any live streams from there? Yeah, I, I definitely will. Uh, in my ideal world, the three distilleries that I would hit would be uh, Lagavulin, Lafroig, and Highland Park. I don't know I can get up to Highland Park, uh, considering they're way out on the Orkneys, way out there. Uh, I'd love to go to Glengoyne. I know they're close to Glasgow. Um, or is it Edinburgh? One of the two. I don't know. We'll see. Definitely going to do the Isla thing if I go. I mean... I'm not going to go there and not go to Isla. So I have a feeling Lagavulin and Lafroy will be uh, almost guarantees our beg. That would be awesome. Uh, basically, everybody, everywhere over there it, it, it interests me except maybe Kalila. Like, that might be the only one that I'm like, eh. not be or Ann Kilhoman. Not because I have anything against it. I, it's just their whiskey just doesn't interest me that much. I'd much rather go to like, if I was going to put together a list, I mean, it would be like Lafroy, Lagavulin, Brooklady, um, Erdbeg, Bunahoven. Like, those would be the ones that are like for sure. But more, I have less interest in. Kalila, I don't have much interest in. Uh, Kilhoman, I don't have much interest in. But, you know, depending on how things shake out, <laughs> we'd probably be there for all of them. I wouldn't be sad. I just don't have a lot of familiarity with Bowmore. I know Mike B sent me a really good Bowmore that from from like what was it the seventies or something? I don't remember where that one's from, but that was really good. Oh, let me see what else is going on. Papa Q, you know, I am complete agreement with you on that, sir. You just got the twenty one Ben Romic. Yeah, man, I I actually still have some of that. Solid. Would love to hear what you end up thinking of it. It's been all good, man. Thank you. I hope things are good by you, Mike. It's great to see you. And I hope uh, hope all is well in your neck of the woods. And of course, do let me know if you're coming through the Windy City again. Um, if uh, you end up here during the daytime, I'd love to take you to Warehouse Liquors. Let you poke around. Apparently, rumor has it they have some Lafroy single casks coming. <laughs> so who knows who knows how the timing will treat us 
But um, yeah, would love to get you down there. We'd appreciate that place. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Okay, uh, give me just a minute, y'all. I'm going to get myself some more water and uh, we'll keep going. All right. All right. We're back in action, man. What's up, y'all? We got nine folks in, which is awesome. I uh, I was thinking about which, about maybe doing another whiskey, something completely different here tonight, because, you know, I know it has been a while, and I'd love to hang out with you guys and chat more. Maybe later this year, I'll let you know. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, for a single... Oh, the Jack Rose. They have a Jack Rose uh, single cask pick. That's good. Oh, hell yeah, Brad. I completely agree. That was my whiskey of the year, I think, in 17 or 18. Dude, that, it's so good. Just fucked out seeing you all today. Glad I did. Have to head out. Hey, Green Gary, man. It's great to see you, man. Hope you've been well. Take care. Patreon link says Mr. Friend. Um, no, I canceled the Patreon. So well, the Patreon page is getting closed. If it's not closed yet, it should be soon. There's a whole process. Um, I just I'm not able to make content in a way anymore that I feel like justifies people doing that. I mean, if you if you really want to support the channel, do super chats or whatever. Uh, I know you had problems with that in the past, but that's fine. But uh, I uh, yeah, I got rid of the Patreon page just because. I can't justify it anymore. I, I'm just not able to to do stuff as, as frequently as I was before. So, you know, I don't want to be unethical about it. Uh, forgot you were over there, Mike. Yeah, Mike is right over there in that neck of the woods. I have a couple Jack Rose. I have a Clendish Jack Rose pick, actually. I remember where that is. but Okay, anyways. Um... Cam do Glenn Livet. Bada bing, bada boom. What I'm thinking is man, that Glenn Livet is so good. I'm not even gonna pretend it's not. It's amazing. Um I'm trying to think of what to open. Or to drink, rather. Hmm. Somebody was mentioning earlier the Buna Haven 2022 cast drink. I don't know if Sasha's still with her name is Sasha. I think maybe I should do this. This would be worth a revisit. It's been a second since I had this one. Hmm. 
Uh, I have some Jack Rose picks. I don't have the ones that I think he's mentioning. I have a Klein Leash Jack Rose pick. I, I used to live in D.C., and let me tell you, Jack Rose is impeccable with their picks. Uh, that's, a, that's a fact. I'm going to do some as Buna. As, uh, I think it was Sasha or somebody else. New, new Excuse me, New World. That's great. Buna Hobbins is one of my favorite distillers. I think that um, so the Buna 25 is, is definitely one of those uh, that I would invest in <laughs> if you ever get the opportunity. I know they can be like absurdly expensive, uh, but if you look in certain places in the UK, you can find it at a comparatively reasonable price. Look, I've only had, well, I have a couple of Freud picks. So I have a, first of all, the High Grove 12, which was good. I'll, I want to show you one that I have. I have not opened this yet. I really should do this one of these days. The Dunvegan. This is a 20 uh, uh, year old vintage, 54.9 uh, unchill natural color. Um, oh, geez, it's got like a whole thing here. This is probably the the one Lafroy that I have that uh, like single cask Lafroy that I've um, yet to open. You ever heard of this one before? I think this is Ian McCloyd. Yeah, 20 year old Lafroy, 54.9. I think this is the wood type is barrels. <laughs> yeah, obviously. I mean, look at the color natural color for sure i should i should open this or maybe i should wait for another live stream i don't know maybe i should uh we already opened the tandy 25 i should maybe save that but that one put that over there for now love buna yeah yeah big fan of the one i mean it's a 20 oh, 20 year old single cast Has anybody had a 20-year-old single cask? Maybe I should I open this tonight? Should we just do this one? I'm super tempted. Yeah, Ian McCloyd. Non-chill filtration, natural color, 54 point. I mean, Jesus. Apparently there are 396 bottles. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe that'll be good for a live stream sometime. Uh, back to the Buna. Yeah, this Buna. Are these, um, for, for folks who are on who are in the U.S., do you see the Buna 12 cast rings anywhere? I never see them around my parts. I've had to go overseas to buy them. I just, I never see the... Uh, and I don't know if it's because it's not in the U.S. market or if it's more like one of these, um, like it takes a really long time. But I, I don't think I've ever seen it. Daniel H. You've only seen Okay. Yeah, man. That's... I, <sighs> Papa Q says I've never seen it in Omaha. I don't know about Gordon. <laughs> Gordon's hitting this signatory Caden at Adelphi. I don't know. I mean, find a distillery you like and, and look for them. Had to order my Buna from the UK as well. Okay, okay. So it sounds like that's the case. Um, I guess that's how it goes, you know. Uh, it's too bad. But... Chris, is that my boy over in the Quad Cities? What's up, Chris? How you doing, man? Ah, Chris S. holds it down in the Quad. How you doing, brother? Long time to see, man. Damn. 
Damn. That sounds delicious. Okay, Neds. Yeah. There's a lot of distilleries that I, I mean, how do you put it? I don't, I mean, there's certain distilleries where I, I literally look for independent bottlings always. Ben Nevis, Kalila, and I'm going to do a big Ben Nevis show soon. Uh, I think that'll be the next live. I have like seven or eight <laughs> Ben Nevis, like rando independent bottlings that I'm going to do a show on. Uh, ben Nevis, um, is one of them that I buy in these always. Kalila is another. I, well, I have bought some many distillery bottlings of Kalila in the past. I think going forward and, and what I've been doing is mostly buying more Indies because I just find that their independent bottlings in almost every case are much better. Um, yeah. Buna... Do I even have any independent Buna? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I do. Let's check this one. This is the uh, I don't I don't know when I'll. So this is a North Star Buna Haven 37, 44.4 percent ABV. Uh, this is the only independent Buna I think I have. Um, yeah. 1980 this is the young uh oldest or the youngest distillate in here i don't know if i'm no, we're not opening this uh tonight my palate's too torch for that i don't think i have any other and independent buddhas are not something i see very often uh you see some from signatories oh wait this one i have a the 10 year buna pot still festival 2022 first fill sherry 64.9 uh, yeah, it's a 10 year old Buna. This is probably the oldest Buna or the, the only Buna signatory that I've ever seen. I don't know, remember even where I got that, but yeah, I don't have anything for independent bottlings of Buna Hobbin. and these distillery bottlings, I think are always really, really good. And I think the only ones you ever find are signatory. So like, I guess I was saying this cast strength is, is quite good. Did I send you the Ben? Uh, you did. I'm not even sure if I've opened it yet. I should look. I just got a new Ben Nevis in WS. It's absolute fire. Rangers beat the Phils 10. 16 to 3. Wow. You have a Gordon McPhail, Buna. Pretty good nine year. Okay. My daughter was in Florida last month and was supposed to get me the Buna to this. She, she fell. It's been since this. Hey, man, I don't blame you. <laughs> okay, you have an elixir. Okay, so there are a lot of boonies out there. I, For whatever reason, the only one I ever see is is from uh, Signatory. <laughs> Mr. White cracking me up with that. <laughs> All right. I think we should do uh, something peated just to. You know what I haven't had? Maybe Arbeg Hypernova. Or that 13.2 Octomore. I don't know. Yeah, let me. I have to check those that you sent me, Mike. Thanks for reminding me. And yeah, like I said, I'm sorry I've been so slow on the stuff. I just don't have the all the time that I had before to. Do the whiskey stuff, hence canceling the Patreon page, and you know I can't justify it ethically, so I don't want to. I won't be like that. You did or spring bank, he says. Well, I don't want any spring bank. I'm not even sure. <laughs> Actually, I know what I'm going to do. It. I'm going to bore you. It's going to be a boring pick, but I'm going to do this. Pete, Pete Monster Arcana. This is something I'll have a review up soon. I shouldn't say it's boring. This is the uh, Pete Monster Arcana. Uh, so it's like the Pete Monster from Campus Box, but then they use French oak, I think, as a finish. It's awesome. <laughs> it came out like two years ago, but it is awesome. Uh, yeah, French oak barrels, 46%. 
Let's do some Arcana. This is true. It's not going to be tonight, though. I don't, man. The problem with Spring Bank, I think that there, I do have a lot of unopened Spring Bank, and I have a lot of unopened Ben Riek, as you can see right here. I have a 25 Ben Riek, a couple 21, 22, 17. I got a bunch of Ben Riek over there. I should do a Ben Riek show one of these nights. Again, a, a distillery of mine that's quickly become a favorite that I I just don't have a lot of time to, uh, I haven't got into, I should say. Hey, Mr. Redman. It's lunch, buddy. How are you? Well, frog night. That was a good night. I agree with you. I like the Arcana a lot. Um, I feel like this whiskey really... Unsung Hero. It was one that I opened and kind of had a couple sips of and then didn't go back to for a long time. But it is an unsung PD hero in my opinion. In my, fan, uh, in, in my opinion. I think it's way better than the regular Pete Monster. And that French oak just gives it that nice creaminess. You get some of that malted milk ball, some of that uh, candy or uh, uh, bakery notes, you know. It's just so good. Dude, I would love, <laughs> love to get my hands on one of those one of these days. Four or five is, is what I'm talking about. When you're putting that score on a whiskey, you're in good, you're in good shape. Just got a couple single cast Ben Romics though. Nice. You know how much I love Ben Romic. Yeah, you talking about the Arcana? Yeah, man, for sure. Um, Mike B, to your point, somebody earlier was mentioning that they had, were having a Ben Romic. I think it was Mr. Porter over there in Detroit was having like a cask, uh, cask strength, like third batch of the 2012 and, and found it rather sulfury. I haven't had a newer, I haven't had, bought a Benromic recently. I think the last Benromic I had, what is the last Benromic I had? I don't know. I've just really never had a Benromic I didn't like. Uh, most of them I find are fucking pretty damn good. Um, I think the one that I... Uh, the one Ben Romick that I didn't, I thought the 21 was like, it's hard to say. The price was really nice. I didn't feel like it was cheap. I didn't feel like it was tired. Like, you know, you buy those Glen Farkless, uh, uh, heavily aged stuff that comes out at 43%. And it's usually just so disappointing. I didn't think the Ben Romick 21 was like that, but it's in that same price range. I, It just, it lacked a little bit. It lacked a little bit of what I hope for. So, Gary, I know you're going to be drinking it. I'll love to hear your notes on it. All right. Anyways, yeah. Um, so we're just we're moving on with our kid. Hey, what's up? Oh, hi. Oh, Top D. How you doing, man? Been a minute, brother. How are you? Hope you've been good, man. Hope you've been good. Elements I love no more. Nice. Smiley face from Top D, man. Good to see you, dude. Yeah, uh, just to bring round it out, we've been doing. Uh, we started off with a twenty-five-year-old Tamdu single cast pick, which was solid. Uh, if not, well, it missed the mark a bit, but it's you know we'll see where it goes. We're doing a little Pete Monster Arcana right now, which I. It is just delightful. I I really uh, it's just one of these whiskeys that I, I swear I've had this open and sit for quite some time, and it's one of these that you just kind of get your. Uh, I never had multiple drinks of, but every time I do, I really really like. <sighs> totally dig it.
Yes, that was the one I was mentioning at the top of the show, Redmond. I really wish they would have, would bring that back. So the Ben Romick used to do this thing called the 10 Imperial Proof, and it was, first of all, their 10 is awesome objectively and very much worth your money. I would buy without hesitation for anybody. It's that good. I, I One of the better, probably for the price, one of the better if not best 10-year-old kind of uh, intro malts that uh, uh, you can find. And it, it has, it's both challenging and, uh, and has a nice, good amount of complexity, but it's very easy sipper. Just all in all, really good stuff. The Imperial Proof, which was done on the British Imperial System, was like basically their 10 at near cask strength. And that one was awesome. Unfortunately, they don't make it anymore. So if you ever see a 10 on the shelf, double check and take a look at that label. Um, if you see a Ben Romick 10 and it says Imperial Proof on it, buy that without hesitation. Um, that one is fantastic. I think I maybe have a couple sample bottles that I filled up left of that, and I kick myself. I wish I would have bought more. It's such a really good whiskey. I mean, again, you know, I've been, I've been hyping Ben Romick for years. I love Ben Romick. Um, my whiskey of the year last year was the Contrast Peat Smoke Sherry Cask, which I, I apparently they don't have a lot of availability of right now. I hope they bring it back out because that whiskey was objectively awesome. Um, and the prices of Benromic are still really good. Uh, so, yeah. I do wish, though, however, that they had that. <sighs> yes, uh, 100%. Yeah, and this is, a, this is a store pick, too. And it just, yeah, not quite what I wanted. Uh, but it's solid. Yeah, I, I completely agree on that. Peter White's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, there it is. Yeah, well, Brad was drinking on that. Yep. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how easy it is to get your hands on this. These is Daniel uh, H. I know you're drinking one. Do you still see the uh, the Compass Box Pete Monster Arcana around on the shelves? I I don't think that I do, but. Look, this this is a this is a banger of a whiskey. I think this comes in around a hundred dollars, and I think it's totally worth it. Forty six percent non chill. It's every time I open this, I like it more and more. I really got to do a review, and I know I've been scarce on all that lately, hence uh, closing down the Patreon. But this is this is a really nice whiskey. All right, y'all. Um, so the last review I think I posted. Oh, oh really? Okay. Yep. Uh, CP. Uh, compass box. Yeah. CB. You can still get a compass box from the. Yeah. Yeah. That might be the place. Look, I mean, I wouldn't go too deep on the price on this. Like, it's not a world beater, but this is a really nice whiskey. It's much better than the regular compass box, and even at you know forty some dollars more, uh, it's really, really quite good. Um. Anyway, so last review was the I think if you haven't seen it yet, I posted a few days ago. Uh, the Naked Grouse Killer Whiskey. Uh, check that out, and then I think maybe the next live stream I do is going to be this single cast twenty year old. Uh, Ian McCloyd, uh, or Ian McLeod, um, La, Lafroig 20. Maybe we'll do that next. I got a couple others that I've been thinking about. That 37 year old North Star Buna, maybe, maybe we'll do that. Um, I don't know. I got a couple other ones sitting around to do. So, uh, yeah, content's going to be less, as, as you guys know. Um, Patreon thing is canceled, so don't try and sign up there. That, that'll be should be gone soon if not um already and uh i'll keep getting out reviews when i can and of course uh love getting on live i uh i will try my best to do some more lives because i do miss hanging out with y'all with that uh i am gonna sign it off i hope you guys have a good rest of your weekend it was really cool to uh get to say hi to you all again 
uh, after it has been a while. I think the last live we did was the Highland Park 25, so it's been a minute. Um, I'll keep it coming when I can. Appreciate you all, and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. It's lunch.